Two former East Point police officers have been indicted in connection with a 2018 shooting. Let's put up the picture of the man they shot and damn near killed. Let's put up the picture of the man in the hospital. All right, former East Point cop, two former East Point cops have now been indicted. Attorney Don Samuel represents former police officer Rodney Etienne who pleaded not guilty. This was a horrific and tragic story. Let's put up the other picture of this young man who can no longer move. All right, he's paralyzed from the neck down, okay? There's some background to this story that's worth highlighting. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis said the office, her office indicted former East Point police officers Rodney Etienne and Chiron Nicole Varner on two counts, each a violation of oath, as well as reckless conduct, aggravated assault and aggravated battery. Let's put up the chief of police of East Point, Georgia. His name is Chief Sean Buchanan. DA Willis, who's a black female, her office said the last two charges stem from allegations that the officers shot at Mr. Nolly, that's the man you saw in the photo, paralyzed, in December of 2018, without justification, while he was running away from them after a car chase that ended on Interstate 285. The office said the misdemeanor reckless conduct charge involves another alleged victim that the officers are alleged to have shot recklessly in a crowded shopping center, resulting in danger to a bystander shopping in a nearby store. Okay, you see this happened in 2018. These cops just got indicted recently. The man who is paralyzed was shot in the back. They tried to kill him. Now, according to the cops, they said, well, it was because he um, he almost ran over us. So they gave us legal justification to hunt him down and kill him. That's basically their narrative. That's the narrative being presented by the attorney who's representing one of the cops. It is insanity. And not only, not only, did they shoot this man in the back? They put all citizens in danger who were in the vicinity. Remember, this went to a grand jury. Grand jury looked at the information, looked at the data, saw the evidence, and said, Well, wait a minute. These cops must be charged. These cops must be indicted. Now, remember, if we already had the George Floyd Policing and Accountability Act passed, the policy that Republicans decided to step against, we would have this information in a federal registry. We would already know what these cops did in 2018. But because we don't have that registry, we do not have that policy, we do not have that federal law, we have to wait until we find out. All right, thoughts on this one? Yeah, so I think this is why we need to be mindful of how we're training police officers. And people also need to be aware of how the law works, right? Um, so when you're looking at the timeline of this particular situation and you consider the fact that the victim was shot in the back, that should indicate that the victim at that point was not a threat. And so the use of force that was utilized to stop him is not is not reasonable, right? So as officers, you know, they are held to a standard where they have to issue a reasonable standard of care. These actions were completely reckless, um, you know, and I really hope that they are truly prosecuted to the fully fullest extent of the law. Um, and it sucks that it just it took so long to, for us to even get here. Ms. Tucker, isn't that the issue, right? Because in almost every profession imaginable, from being a doctor to a professor to a psychologist, all of those industries require a higher standard of care and a higher standard of accountability. Meaning, there are right. things that you and I can do, it would not be deemed illegal because we're right. not professionals in that arena. But if they do it, if they do it, it is a violation of actual statute. And they're held to a higher 
penalty for those actions. But in policing, my dear sister, yeah. somehow yeah. we have reversed yeah. the model in policing. And we are now holding them to a lower standard of accountability, a lower standard of care. And we think it's normative and it is not normative for any other profession. I've never heard anyone say when a store clerk makes the wrong decision and they decide to shoot somebody that wasn't robbing a store. No one says to that store clerk, well, you know what? You have a dangerous job. We understand. We're going to give you qualified immunity. Never happened. That's the excuse. That's, that's the excuse for police officers, right? We excuse their actions by saying, oh, they're in a dangerous position and they have to act fast and this and the yep. third. But the reality is that they should be trained accordingly. That is yep. the profession that you signed up for. You knew the danger was. Um, but there was a potential of danger, right? When you apply for that position. And so you took on that responsibility to say, I'm gonna put my life on the line every day to protect people. So I think it's wrong for us as American citizens to hold them to a lesser accountability, a lesser standard than any other profession because their job is so called dangerous. Well, we're finding out they're more dangerous than the people that they're supposed to be arresting, but that's yeah. a whole nother situation. And I bring up store clerks intentionally because literally based on actual data that we have been able to analyze for the last 20 years, it's more dangerous to be a person working in a store, a 7-Eleven, than it is being a cop. The number one most dangerous profession in America based on fatality and severe injury is being a tree cutter. But if you cut that tree and it falls the wrong way and somebody dies, I guarantee you that tree cutter will be held accountable.